Hello and welcome to Favorite Rugby Beyond, Favorite Sports. For today's Six Nations Round 3 review, what a round it was. Uh, so much drama, almost an incredibly historic uh, result, and a lot of controversy as well, which is kind of always the case when it comes to Six Nations, isn't it? There's always something to talk about, there's always some sort of incident. Um, and a very, very impressive performances are coming from a couple of sides. And we'll talk about the most impressive performance being that of Italy versus France in France on Sunday. Um, so before we do get onto that, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the uh, channel as well. Uh, we'll start with uh, the first result, uh, which was... Um, I'm going to bring it up here. Uh, here we go. Uh, and that was... Ireland versus Wales, and uh, this was a result which sort of showed you um, that Ireland are at the moment really across above the rest. Uh, you know, I thought at times they were maybe at their best, but they're so clinical. They're such a good rugby side that um, they just wear down teams, and teams just really struggle to compete and keep up. I think the word keep up is also very important in terms of just how much they are relentless and how they wear down teams uh, that just then eventually create the opportunities that they need to score points. Uh, so at halftime, 17-0, I thought the Wales were pretty decent in the first half and, and had moments where they sort of had some really nice defensive um, moments, but um, they, they, they're just too critical. I don't know, and I thought that Wales had opportunities to come back into the game and didn't really take them. And I think that was probably a big moment. Now, I think about that penalty try, for example, the yellow card, two tie burn. It was a really big opportunity for Wales to try and get back into the game, and they just couldn't. In the end, Ireland getting that bonus point win, 31 points to nil, and uh, they are at the moment on track for a perfect Grand Slam uh, Six Nations win. They, need to, they win the next two matches with bonus points, then that'll be a perfect 25-point haul. Uh, we then saw Scotland hosting England in the Kolkata Cup, where they made it four wins in a row in the Kolkata Cup, beating England once again. Uh, first half was scrappy, I think, for both sides. Um, you know, England had a really nice moment first up, uh, with a nice set move. After that, they kind of didn't offer much, to be honest. Just didn't see a lot of structure. And uh, Scotland were deadly on the counter-attack. As soon as they had a space, they took it really well. Doing front of Merva with a hat-trick of tries. And uh, then a very reliable boot from Finn Russell. And good game management as well uh, from the Scotland number 10. As uh, they managed to beat England 30 points, 21 in the end. Uh, a very, very impressive game from Scotland. And I just feel that had Scotland beaten France, which I think they should have, the Six Nations could have been really interesting. I think it would have really come down to that last sort of game, or the last day. Um, but uh, at this stage, we'll need to um, sort of slip up if that is to be the case. But then, the most drama, and the question being, were Italy robbed of a victory against France? And I think they were. So, half-time, 10 points to three, very close game. Italy staging a comeback and uh, equalising France um, with about 10 minutes to go. Then having a late penalty and uh, all the drama, literally all the drama. First of all, the ball falling off a kicking tee. Um, with Paul uh, uh, and everybody sort of wondering how does the ball full of kicking tee and you know indoor, indoors obviously didn't play particularly well. Um, but when that happened, uh, um, you, we saw a couple of French players charging him, which you're not allowed to do at a penalty. Um, and even when he took it eventually, and then he had to rush it, um, uh, I think it was one of the props uh, put their arms up or made a mo movement towards the ball, which you're not allowed to do. So obviously, was Russians taking the kick, and it did come off the pole. Had he split the poles, they would have won. Now, it's a very interesting dive into the, the, the law book because there's no sort of uh, specific law that addresses this particular scenario. But there's a very, very definitive law that says you may not charge the goal kicker. And if you do charge the goal kicker for a penalty, the penalty kick should be retaken, which means that that shot clock, as soon as they charged, should have been set back. And had it been set back, Paula got busy, would have had time to set the ball properly once again and had 60 seconds uh to to take the penalty and uh yeah i just feel that um had he been able to do that look we don't know he might have missed it again but uh, he is a good goal kicker as Pollock got busy and uh, it wasn't the most difficult it wasn't an easier opportunity but it wasn't the most difficult kick and uh i think it was a call that was obviously a massive call and uh, i think a bit of an inexperienced referee i think they were afraid to make that call but i think you look back at that that'll set a precedent and i think that if you look at the letter of the law um, and, and Nigel Owens, uh, I'm sure, will we'll probably come do a bit of a piece of it over the next couple of days. But uh, even apart to comments saying Twitter saying that you may not charge the goal kicker for a penalty. And uh, the minute that happened, the second that it happened, the referee should have picked up on it and reset it and said, nope, stop. You can't do that. Right, let's start again. 60 seconds, off you go. And uh, what a win that would have been historic for Italy had they managed to beat France. And, and it begs a very interesting question. 
have France regressed that much or have Italy progressed that much, considering that uh, France beat Italy 60 points to 7 in the World Cup just, what, four months ago uh, in October? So, uh, I, as I said, I'm, I'm a big Italian rugby fan, and I think this is a result that proved, first of all, they should remain in the Six Nations, um, and that they are a side in the rise. We also saw that uh, they're down in the 20s beating France, you know, so they, they, they've got a really gold, good golden generation coming through, and I'm really excited to see what Italian rugby is going to become in the next few years. Uh, I just feel they were robbed, and, and this is the second time where France has been bailed out by the referee. I think Scotland should have beaten them, and I think Italy should have beaten them, and France actually should have been sitting last, basically, on the table, or could be sitting last on the table, uh, you know, being the bottom, 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 bottom there with, uh, with Wales, Italy, um, but I think they deserve to be, and it's an interesting concept. Now, I don't think... It's all down to Antoine Dupont, for example. Uh, you know, he can't be, you know, as much as, as phenomenal of a player he is, you know, there's still quality world-class players in that in that French side. Uh, I think, you know, they're missing Romain Intermac a lot. I think Jonathan Dodge is playing pretty poor rugby at the moment. I think that they're really missing him as a point of difference, for example. Certain players aren't stepping up. So I think there's a lot more sort of structural issues to France than just saying there's no Dupont. But a very interesting weekend of, of, uh, of Six Nations rugby. It does take a break before the penultimate round and then, Final round goes back to back. So we are back to domestic rugby this weekend. Let me know what you thought about the round down in the comments below. Please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.